Hey, Word Warriors. It's me, Melissa, Safe Haven Ministries, and this is Day 68. And the title of our message today is Grief Happens. Grief Happens. Uh, I'm Today's a, a little bit different because I want to give you some scriptures that undergird you. As you go through this time of grief, you need to know you're not by yourself. We have great men of God who went through the same thing and they're pouring their hearts out to God and you may feel like they do. So let's jump in today. Uh, in my quiet time, God reminded me of something that I really didn't know. Uh, he said, Melissa, you think of grief as something that happens periodically through life, a little here, and maybe down the road, a couple of years later, you have grief and, and it's hard to go through that. But he said, actually, grief is the norm all the way through our life. Peace is the exception. And I got to thinking about that. And, and we don't always understand that we're going through a grieving situation. It, it's, it's a, it flows through our life. Let me give you some examples. We probably just don't recognize it as grief. Uh, grief means a, a great sadness. And we have people who live in sadness a lot during their lives. And part of that is because of grieving situations. Let me give you an example. Rejection. Affection that's uh, not shared by your parents. They don't know how to show you affection. And that causes us to, to go back in our mind and, and, and grieve over what, what could have been what was, what was missing. We grieve over that and, and we carry that with us. Losing friends, whether, whether they're moving from another town or they're just don't want to be around you anymore. That's sadness. It's life disrupted. And anytime life is disrupted, we have emotions tied to that. Now, another one would be leaving losing or retiring from a job and it's not the job you miss usually but it's the people at the job and the routine of what you did every day and not having that causes a loss in our heart and that takes us into a time of grieving um i think sometimes we don't recognize it because grieving can be so mild and so subtle but it can also come in like a tidal wave and just sweep over you to where it takes your breath. It depends on what your loss was. Another one would be women who've tried for years to have a child and they've never been able to get pregnant. That causes a grieving in their spirit. Now, what I'm getting at is if, if grieving is not watched very carefully, and recognize this is what's happening to me. I'm, I'm in a, a period of grieving and I just didn't realize what it was. I didn't call it what it was. But it can lead to depression, hopelessness, fear. What kind of fear? The fear that you'll never be happy again. And that is such a lie from the pits of hell. Um, in Job 7.7, 7, listen to what he says because he went through this. If you remember, Job lost everything except his wife, and God left her there, and she was awful. She just said, you know, just curse God and die. She was a winner, wasn't she? She'd make me look better all the time. Job 7.7 7 says, Oh God, remember that my life is but a breath, and I will never feel happiness again. Maybe you feel that way. But please understand that is temporary. That's a lie that Satan's planted in your heart. When we beg God to make things go back the way they were, and we say, God, I, I want you to save a life or, or change this situation and, and the outcome. And if he doesn't do that, sometimes we have a very, uh, uh, maybe a real quiet sense of anger towards him. Why didn't he do that? Why did he leave me here by myself? Why didn't I get that job? Why didn't things work out for me? You know, I don't understand why he did that. You see, when we get in a situation with, with sadness, we got to blame somebody. And we blame him. We blame other people, the paramedics, the doctor that should have done something. But you know who we blame the most often? Ourselves. 
Maybe if I'd just done this, if I'd just done that, if I could have changed a situation, things would have worked out better. But the answer is that's a dangerous place to be. It is. You can't blame yourself because you couldn't see the future. You didn't know what to do. And, and I told you grief flows through our lives. It's seasonal. It's like winter. Sometimes we have a mild winter and we have a hard winter. We have a bitter cold winter. And then we have one of those winters that you, you just are hopeful that spring is on the way. That's where we are right now. That's me. I'm, I'm hoping that spring is on the way. In Ecclesiastes 3, 1, 4, and 9, it says there's a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. A time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. The loss of a close family member adds extra depth to your grieving you need to understand that it, it, it has to do with your identity because you shared a closeness. You did certain things together. You ate supper at the same time. You went together places and you were always there. But in this relationship, see, in, in the grieving process, now we sometimes have to re-identify ourselves. Maybe you lost a child and you're thinking, I was a mother. Or I was a wife, I was a husband, I was, I, I was a, a, a child, I was a sibling. And we look at that and we're thinking, who am I now? You're the same person. If you were a mother and gave birth to a child, you are still a mother. You're a mother who's, who has suffered loss, but you're still a mom. It doesn't change your identity. And, and now you have to re-identify what it looks like or redefine what is my life going to look like now without this person and and that's a frightening place to be except we've got a god who says listen i came to comfort you and walk you right through the middle of this stuff and I, i'm right there for you when um when we're in the middle of grieving sometimes we just need to step back and breathe because the pain is so great and we can't explain it to anybody else it's just it's just weighs on it. It's more than we can handle. And and sometimes the nights are filled with the if onlys, with the, oh, I wish I had said this. I wish I'd done that. You know, we can't go back and repeat things, but just trust yourself that those people felt your love. They knew you loved them. In spite of situations, in spite of goofy stuff that might have happened, they knew you loved them. And King David said it well, you know, knowing God and his comfort doesn't take away the ache, but it supports you in the middle. In Psalm 6, 2 to 4, it says this. It says, have, have compassion on me, Lord, I'm weak. Heal me, Lord, for my bones are in agony. I'm sick at heart. How long, O Lord, until you restore me? Return, O Lord, and rescue me. Save me because of your unfailing love. Save me. Grieving can't be rushed. It's unique to you. Some people just grieve for days and days, and some people for years. Either one is fine. It's up to you. Here's what you cannot do. You can't let the grieving process uh, take control of you. I think that's the way I want to do it, and stop you from living your life. In Psalms uh, 139. Remember it says, Lord, you've examined my heart. You know everything about me. Thank you for making me wonderfully complex. And in the about the fourth verse, it says that, or 16th verse, it says, every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day passed. As we come in here, the grieving process is not a matter of getting rid of pain, but not being controlled by pain. Your heart lost someone or something special. Now it's time to move on. And you can move on without feeling guilty. Let's pray. Father, I ask right now, as I stretch my hand forward, I pray for these people, Lord, who are going through grieving right now. God, I ask that you touch their hearts and their lives. I pray, God, that you show them that you're right there for them right now. 
and you're going to walk them through whatever they have to walk through. But help them to forgive you, to forgive themselves, to forgive others. And just know that you are going to take them through and it's okay to be happy again. Help them to understand that, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. I never tell you what I'm going to do tomorrow, except today I am. If you want to get a head start, read Proverbs chapter 1, and we're going to be in some of those verses. Amen. God bless.